Welcome, you're watching CNN News 18 with me, Poonam Burde. The big story we're tracking at this hour is the fight between the centre and the Tamil Nadu government. After India released new GDP figures for the last quarter of 2023 yesterday, former Tamil Nadu Finance Minister has now sparked a controversy by comparing India's GDP to Tamil Nadu's net state domestic product, which is NSDP. Former Finance Minister of the State claimed that Tamil Nadu's real per capita growth was higher than the country's real per capita growth. He further asserted that Tamil Nadu's per capita GDP had risen from at least 1.3 times to at least 1.44 times the Indian average. In response, BJP hit right back. Tamil Nadu BJP chief argued that the national per capita growth was higher than that of Tamil Nadu. Now remember yesterday, uh, the growth uh, projections came to the fore. The growth uh, for quarter three also was released by the central government, which was much higher than expected. Naysayers and uh, doomsday predictors as far as India's uh, economy is concerned were given a big jolt as far as the centre was concerned. That has now triggered this controversy between the centre and the state as well. Let's listen into some reactions pouring in. India's inflation problem is more a commodity inflation problem, vegetable inflation problem, and uh, that is also going to be negative for growth. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that uh, we would be uh, lucky if we do 5% next year. Yes, that's right. It's a mind-blowing number. For the third quarter itself, the growth has come in at 8.4% against the CNBC TV 18 poll of 67 So, I mean, this is like absolutely fascinating. It is, to be sure, a, a smaller base because last year's base, which was 4.5, has been revised lower to 4. Point, uh, which was 4.5 has been revised lower to 4.3. Nevertheless, uh, 8.4 is way above what the street was expecting. What's even better, the full year number, uh, the second advance estimate has revised the full year number to 7.6 against a, 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 a previous 7.3, which itself was much higher than what the street was expecting. The CNBC TV 18 poll had put the full year number at 7.1. So it's a good half a percentage point higher, uh, according to the second advance estimates. A part of it is explained by the lower revision of FY23, revised lower from 7.2 to 7%. But that again is because the even previous number of FY22 has been revised higher from 9.1 to 9.7. So it's revisions galore. But the net takeaway is that the economy is in fine fettle. Growth is ticking like never before. Uh, the key components of growth in the current nine months and the third quarter is certainly not agriculture. That's actually fallen in the third quarter by 0.8%. But... Uh, uh, manufacturing has done extremely well at 11.6%. Construction is doing very well at almost double digits, 9.5%. So clearly, this is a growth uh, driven very well by manufacturing and by uh, services like construction. From the demand side, there is a bit of a, a worry because consumption, private final consumption expenditure has grown by only 3.5% in the third quarter. Government final consumption expenditure has actually contracted by 3%. But the bulk of the heavy lifting is being done by gross fixed capital formation or investment, which has grown by 10.6%. So consumption still weak. This is a growth, uh, 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 an extraordinary growth, which is being fueled almost entirely by investment. That's the message from the GDP numbers. Pallavi, my colleague now joining us, getting us more perspective. Pallavi, ahead of the 2024 big clash, this is going to be a booster for uh, the central government. Economy is something that the opposition has been uh, using as a plan to target the government. So this definitely is going to come as a shot in the arm. Absolutely, Poonam. In fact, the fulcrum of the Bharat Joro Nyaya Yatra, when Rahul Gandhi talks about providing justice, that is exactly this what he keeps talking about. In fact, even today he tweeted about the fact that there are no jobs, rising prices, and how the economic, economic growth is extremely slow, it's sluggish. And it's not just the Congress. I think the entire India front has decided that this is going to be their main electoral slogan for 2024. But these kind of staggering figures of GDP growth at 8.4% and also of the financial year growth 
growth projection of 7.6% put out by the finance ministry. I think the government's counter, or rather the BJP's counter most specifically, is very strong against this because there are multiple factors which add to these growth projections as well as the GDP, which clearly shows that there's infrastructural development taking place, there's more job opportunities, India is an uh, attractive destination for investments, for startups, and obviously this, do, this does draw up job opportunities. The finance ministry always in his defense has made the point that there are global factors which may explain some of the high prices and for that to blame the government or the BJP is incorrect. So the stage is set for the 2024 low, uh, Lok Sabha elections, Purim at least as far as the economic front is concerned. Why do we then still have uh, the opposition come out and say that this is nothing but a Jumla Pallavi? We have uh, the RJD leading that attack on uh, the BJP and the central government as well, that these are just all claims to be made, but the reality on ground is very different. Well, I mean, the Congress specifically has always put forward Raghuram Rajan, and that's a point which the BJP is also raising. Uh, it, it, the, it was an earlier YouTube interview between Rahul Gandhi and Raghuram Rajan, where the former RBI governor predicted that the growth will not be more than 5%, and he said there's a reason for worry. Now, that argument has been picked up by the other opposition parties as well. See, according to them, if you go to the markets, if you go to the shops, people are having to pay a lot more money than earlier as far as essential commodities are concerned. They are those periodic charts which are put out by the India front, by the Congress, the TMC, always to make the point that, you know, life is not so hunky-dory as the BJP wants to make out to, uh, to be. But the benchmark always, or to, and to calculate the economic growth or infrastructural growth has always been the GDP figures and the projection of the finance growth. So the BJP has nothing to worry about on that count. The, con the government certainly is going to put forward these figures even more strongly. I think this is going to be a kind of a political war of words which have always going to take place uh, as far as the elections in uh, 2024 are concerned. Right, Pallavi. Thank you so much for getting us that perspective. The political war of words, like Pallavi was pointing out, is only going to escalate now in the run-up to the big 2024 clash. Let's listen into some reactions coming in from within the opposition ranks. GDP growth बढ़ने की बात आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री जी कर रहे हैं, विकसित भारत बनाने की बात कर रहे हैं, और सब लोगों को पता है कि इस देश में बेरोजगारों की फौज नौजवानों की खड़ी है, किसानों की क्या हालत है? चारों ओर लोग त्राहिमाम कर रहे हैं गरीब गरीब होते जा रहे हैं सिर्फ चंद मुट्ठी भर लोगों को लाभ मिल रहा है आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री जी जो भी वादा कर रहे हैं उसका हस्र क्या है ये सबको पता है जुमलेबाजी से देश नहीं चल सकता नौजवानों को रोजगार चाहिए नौकरी चाहिए और गरीबों का थाली खाली है महंगाई के कारण so the GDP growth uh, in uh, the third quarter has reached 8.4% and Prime Minister says that this is just an example of the strength of this government and they will continue to do so, they will continue to deliver and will make sure that the 140 crore uh, billion people in India will actually get uh, be involved in the Vikasit Bharat development in the country. The point is uh, people are aware that the macro level claims made by the government do not correspond to the micro level realities and they talk about uh, GDP is increasing what about inflation what about the purchasing power of the common people and what is the value of Indian rupee today and what is the foreign debt India has today how every citizen has to bear the burden of foreign debt. Why government is not uh, prepared to discuss these uh, relevant methods and substantial issues mm. and government makes tall claims but on the ground what is happening? Why there is price rise? Mm. Why there is unemployment? Why the farmers are agitating asking for minimum support price? Mm. Why it is all happening?